We talk about IQ and EQ. Well, I actually like to talk about LQ, uh, the leadership quotient. The Wooden Awards has been part of an interest in what Wooden has to say for enlightened, righteous, uh, effective leadership. I think the Wooden Awards have done two things. It has allowed us to remember in the management school an important UCLA icon whose vision of what's right and what's wrong is so fundamental and that has bubbled up across the campus. You ready to go meet? Pui? Sure. Let's go meet Pui. Pui's from Thailand, and when the Asian financial crisis of 1997 hit, it destroyed most of Asia, and it bankrupt business entities, including her family. I start notice that my mom was acting odd, and she was saying that she no longer have any more money to send me to school. I wasn't just gonna stand by and do nothing. Teaching myself to create the website to help the family, it opened up an opportunity for us to go international. She started teaching others at age 11 through an organization called Heart For You. She had her mother take her to poor parts of Northern Thailand so that she could teach where schools weren't available. And just recently, I brought Google Academy to our own country so education and learning can be part of life. She started the Women at Google chapter in Bangkok. Women at Google give us a way to come together, to network, then we can learn to empower each other. And now our entire family, we start rescue organization to help stray dogs in Bangkok. It's good to fix the problem about stray dogs and also good for the communities as well. If you only think about yourself, you hit a certain limit. There is only so far you can go. You have to contribute to a larger movement. This is a remarkable commitment to community that is nothing short of wooden-esque. Rob epitomizes something that's been very important to me. Dean Osborne. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Hey, it's a pleasure to see you and congratulations for being selected. And that is the quality of a servant leader. Rob, uh, you're from a long line of Marines that have come to Anderson. Tell me a little bit about those challenges in the Marines and, and in your life. We were off the coast of Okinawa getting ready to do an amphibious assault uh, under the cover of darkness. And I was responsible for 54 Marines who were the, uh, the vehicle crew members and we were gonna be ferrying to shore over 200. The weather started to turn on us and the wave action got quite intense. I remember standing on the bridge with the captain and asked me, hey, what do you think? What's your assessment of the situation? We decided that it was gonna be a good training situation. I was confident in their skills and abilities and we went with it. You know, opportunity to make that go or no-go call is something that's always gonna stick with me. He has been serving a greater cause since he took an ROTC scholarship and spent his spare hours in college spearheading and leading a volunteer group to help midshipmen get into officer training school. You've seen a lot of situations in a lot of different countries, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and here. And he's been recognized for his volunteer leadership. Coming to Anderson isn't even totally about him. He's here in support of his wife's career instead of in 29 Palms pursuing a high-level military position. We made a team decision. I transitioned into the reserves and then came to Anderson at the same time. Here at Anderson, I've really tried to take some of the challenges I faced and develop them into opportunities for others. Believe it or not, it was really hard for me to translate my military experience into an effective resume. He has developed a database showing how the specific skills that officers from the military have can be adapted and translated in many positions in the corporate world. He empowers others to be able to fulfill their mission, and that, to me, is the highest calling. Being able to participate in the Anderson Career Team program as a coach um, has been really rewarding. I received a lot of support um, last year when I was recruiting that allowed me to be successful in getting a, a full-time position at Barclays after graduation. Having that opportunity to kind of come and pass that forward has been, has been really great this year. Rob Bujalachi has read John Wooden's writings, but what is most interesting to me is that he read these writings long after 
he had walked many a mile in Coach's footsteps. I admire Amanda's dedication to the Department of State and our mission abroad. I believe you are the first diplomat we have had as a Wooden Fellow. Well, I was a freshman in high school on 9-11. Like so many people, I asked myself after that, what motivates someone to come from the other side of the world and kill innocent people? When I signed up for the Foreign Service, I agreed to represent U.S. policy regardless of the party in power. Staying nonpartisan protects our credibility as interlocutors with foreign governments and in advising our own government. Our job is to help the U.S. government make sense of what's happening overseas and to help foreign governments understand U.S. policy. I've worked in Cyprus, in Ecuador, and in D.C. covering the Balkans and Pakistan. Working in national security is the ultimate exercise in teamwork. There's a lot Lots of interconnected players and issues as well. Diplomacy and your roles sound very rewarding, but none of that is technically a business. So why business school? I'm here to be a better leader. For me, that means understanding new perspectives, including the perspectives of the private sector. As you know, I interned this summer for a couple of your passion projects, the Head Start Management Fellows Program and the Healthcare Executive Program. That was really helping nonprofits tackle some of their own strategic issues. She's all about team goals on making the most ethical decisions. Early in our careers, we're taught something called the Washington Post test. Whenever we're having discussion, we need to stop and ask ourselves, how would this look if it were on the front page of the Washington Post tomorrow? Our decisions have to stand up to not only the scrutiny of the public, but also of history. When it is all said and done, it is her willingness to listen, to learn, to understand the mission, and to come together with foreign groups. This bodes well for her potential and future as a leader. Danny is an executive MBA who is an assistant chief pilot at Delta. I was in the Navy for about 14 years as an officer and a pilot. I'm sure you've seen some sticky situations. There was one particular story that I remember while we were flying over the North Arabian Sea. I had taken a break as the pilot and went to the back. Our entire aircraft lost pressurization. My fingers were turning blue and I was starting to feel euphoric, which are signs of hypoxia. I saw my co-pilot was pretty much incapacitated. So I had to take the controls and get us down to 10,000 feet. It's an event I'm gonna remember, but it's also an everyday occurrence for um, a Navy pilot. I think the Navy does a good job of teaching preparedness, poise, and teamwork, which are key elements to leadership. I think they're also key elements to John Wooden's philosophy as well. Her leadership experience in the military has served her well in life. Her personal experiences may have tested her more, and it is there that I find where she really shaped her notions of success. My life has been heavily influenced by the addiction of my, my brother to alcohol and drugs. During this time period, our family was there for him. I became his main support network. I was doing everything I could to help him financially, find him uh, rehab centers. There was a time where he actually hit rock bottom and we weren't sure if he was gonna get through it. With my love and help, with the help of the family and his own grit and tenacity, he made it through that, and he actually stayed clean. He got a scholarship, he not only held down a job, but became manager of a job, but unfortunately with addiction, it will always rear its ugly head, and when the pressure got to be too much, he overdosed and uh, passed away at the age of 30. I like to talk about his story because I think it's something that we can all learn from. His achievements in those last couple years outshined any of the defeats he had. I know that I gave it my best, and I think that's the definition of success. Through the trials and agony associated with the passing of her brother, Danny kept peace of mind knowing that each day she had done her very best. Winners today in many sports cuffed their hand and say yes. There is Coach Wood at an important event in his life where he cuffed his hand and said yes. Success isn't just winning,
But success is knowing that you gave it your all. You did the best that your abilities could allow to happen in that situation. And that makes you a winner. And Coach reminds us that that should be how we judge our ability to be of consequence in whatever we do.